So we are now recording. Uh, as always, please don't take any screenshots, photos, or recordings of the call without the express permission of AGJC. Thank you for joining us today, and we hope you will join us again next week. To stay updated on AGJC events, please follow us on Twitter at, at Gulf Jewish and visit our website, www.gulfjewish.org. Wishing you all a Shabbat Shalom from the Rahamic family house in Abu Dhabi. Uh, and lighting the candles today, we will turn over to Riva. Hi, everyone. Shabbat Shalom from Abu Dhabi. I'm looking out my window towards the site of the Abrahamic family house where I was earlier this morning and last night. It definitely feels like there is a buzz in the air uh, this week in particular, and it feels only appropriate that I am welcoming and Shabbat with, with this group, um, our, extended, our extended community in many time zones. Uh, so I'm going to symbolically light Shabbat candles now. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam Asher kitshanu b'mitzvotav v'tzivanu l'hazik ni she'el Shabbat Shabbat Shalom Shabbat Shalom, Riva uh, And now over to Avi for Yedid Nefesh Okay, thank you And blessed Friday and Shabbat Shalom to everyone Yedid nefesh avarachaman meshoch abdecha el ritzonecha yarutz abdecha kemo ayal ishtach abemul adarecha ki yerav lo yedidotecha minof etzuf echoltam Adur nae ziva olam naf shicholat avatecha ana el narefa na la be arot la no am zivercha as titchazek feti trape vehai tala simchat olam fatik yemuna. Rachamecha, Bechusana, Albenau Vecha, Kizek, Aman, Ersof, Nersafti, Lirot, Betty Ferret, Uzecha, Anai Lecham Dali, Bechusana, Bealtit Alam, Igalena, Ufros, Habibi Alai, Et su kacha elomecha, taire ret me quodecha, na gila benis mechabach, ma herahov, kiba mohed, becha ne nu ki me olam. Thank you, Avi. And for the first time from the synagogue, Lecha Dodi, Alex. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. February 2019, when we started the Jewish community of the Emirates, when we started to make this pre Shabbat Kabbalat Shabbat Zooms, when the pandemic hit and we could not pray together. I never would have even think about having this dream that a few years later, I will stand here in a beautiful synagogue in Abu Dhabi and be able to have Kabbalah Shabbat with everybody together. So I think the moment has come before I say to actually say what I feel. And I think that there is not a better way to say what I feel than to say, Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Amen. 
שבת נקבלה, שחמו וזכו ודיבור אחד, ישמיענו אל המיוחד, אדוני אחד ושמו אחד, שם על תפארת ולתהילה. לך ZANG Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Thank you, Alex. That was amazing. And now we will turn over to Eli, who will introduce our speaker. Of course, there's no introduction, but Eli, please go ahead. Eli, you're on mute. Eli, can you hold me? Sorry, everybody, we're just waiting for Eli to come on. And I have to tell you something, we have 99 people on today. This is amazing. It's a record for us. Oh, actually it's 100. 100. It's actually 100. It's 100. Eli? Okay, thank you. I switched phones. Can you hear me, Huda? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, sorry about that. Little challenge with my phone at the moment. So I'm delighted to make the introduction to Rabbi Yehuda Sarna. And I have to tell you, as Alex has alluded to, uh, these last uh, day, day and a half has had a emotional and spiritual overload. Um, those of us who've been on this journey, I think will uh, begin to understand uh, just how amazing these days have been. We are all blessed to be observing it either up front, up uh, uh, in person, or vicariously through through the experiences of others, but it's really something which is beyond uh, my ability to capture. Uh, I will tell you, I'm, I feel privileged and blessed to be to be witnessing it and to to be living at a time that this is happening. Uh, my brief introduction. I don't usually sound rabbinic in what I try to do, but I can't help but note that uh, we are in the book of Exodus. And, and uh, I want to capture three themes of the Exodus, because this is the portion that we're about reading today and, and have read in the past and will read next week. So, of course, the Exodus speaks to our, our freedom, our, the sense of liberty that we have to really form and shape our destiny. 
uh, followed right afterwards with the receiving of the Torah, which defines our spiritual life and our yearning for a world that lives by the rules of all of our tradition. Uh, and that's uh, really what we are reading last week and this week. Uh, and then shortly thereafter, immediately thereafter, we read about the, the building of the Mishkan, uh, which is the tabernacle. And that's the space that was created for the encounter with the divine. And I think the fact that Yehuda Sarna is standing where he is, is a symbolic uh, Mishkan. It is a, a sense of our meeting our destiny, our brothers and sisters from around the world, uh, a beacon of light and hope. And I can think of no person more suitable, more appropriate to be doing what he is doing than Yehuda Sarna, who has been uh, heroically on this trip, on this journey, not just for himself and for the community in, in the UAE, but really for the Jewish people. Uh, and his patience, his wisdom, his guidance has helped all of us uh, maneuver through uncharted waters, a path that we never anticipated being on. Uh, and it, it gives me great pleasure to introduce him as the chief rabbi of the UAE at this amazing period of time and moment in history. Thank you so much, Eli. Those words, um, just, they, they mean so much to me. And uh, as I'm looking at you and also the, the names and faces of so many other people who are here right now, this has really been a journey that we have all been on together. Um, okay, friends, can you hear me now? Just wave. Yes, Rabbi. Yes, we can. Yes. Okay, thank you. So I, I happened to be in the UAE in February of 2019, the same time that the Pope and the Grand Imam of al Azhar were here to sign the document of human fraternity. It was nothing more than coincidence, or might you say providence. Um, and uh, I was not part of those ceremonies in any way. But I do remember that I was in the country and I opened the national and I saw the announcement by uh, Chef Mohammed bin Zayed, then the crown prince, that uh, in honor of the signing of the document of human fraternity between the Pope and the Grand Imam, that uh, the in Abu Dhabi, they would build an Abrahamic family house, which would include a mosque, a church, and a synagogue. And at the time when Jewish life in uh, in the UAE was still was still very private and and really confined to uh, one rented villa, the idea that there would be a purpose built synagogue, a part of a larger complex, was 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 jaw dropping, and. Um, Little did I know uh, that uh, some of the backstory, which is that there had been this idea uh, floating around for um, for several years. And then in January, as the team from Al-Azhar and the team from the Vatican were discussing the details of the um, of the, the Pope's visit and the ceremony that would that would be entailed. They came up with an idea of having a, a mosque and a church in order to commemorate the signing of the document of the human fraternity. And when this idea came to Sheikh Mohammed bin Said with a plan, he said, hold on a sec, a mosque and a church, where's the synagogue? And sure enough, uh, that got incorporated into the plans. The synagogue, um, as I, I came on to, help advise the architects and designers in the construction of the synagogue complex in the uh, in the autumn of 2019. And so it's really been a journey of, of just about three and a half years for me. Um, having been on site when there was nothing but dust, uh, having visited multiple times over the stages of the construction, um, having encountered many challenges and questions about how to make this space, uh, a synagogue that would be able to be used by Jews from around the world, all different customs, all different denominations, um, and a place that would meet the needs of the local Jewish community, and also be the kind of space that would inspire people of all different faiths who would come to walk through, and for many of them, in a synagogue for the very first time. Most recently, this became expressed in, in for me, it was the, one of the most exciting things was working with the cohort of 
uh, of Emirati tour guides who are going to be leading people through the various houses of worship and trying to think about, okay, in seven to 10 minutes of the hour long tour that people are going to be in the synagogue, what is it that they're going to hear? What are the explanations of the Aaron Kodesh, of, uh, of the ark that's behind me, the Ten Commandments, the Ner Tamid, the Eternal Flame? Um, why are synagogues built in the way that they are? Uh, when you visit, you'll see there's not just a main sanctuary, which I'm in right, in right now, but also uh, two mikvahot, two ritual immersion baths, uh, Beit Midrash, a place for study and teaching, and, uh, and uh, a residence for a young rabbinic couple who are going to be living right here on site uh, with a hosting area for them to host meals, celebrations, classes, etc. Last night, my, I had a chance to meet face to face with the architect for the first time. My wife and my uh, four younger boys are here. And I have to say, it was just beautiful to hear my kids' reactions to the architect. Because as you walk through the building, you see that uh, the synagogue, mosque, and church are all of equal height. They are all of equal size. And they're all facing the traditional orientation of prayer, the mosque, the Mecca, the church facing east, and the synagogue facing towards Jerusalem. And they each have a simple geometric shape, uh, which is defining of that space. In the case of the synagogue, which I'll show you in just a moment, it's these, uh, it's a kind of triangular shape. Um, and that theme, the ge that geometric theme is brought throughout all the different parts of the synagogue. Um, already in the very short amount of time that the complex has been even nominally open, it's not yet open to the public, but you can see the expressions of, of wonder and wow. Uh, and that's exactly what my 11 year old communicated to the, uh, to the architect, David Ajay. He says, you know, I, I was amazed. You know, I walked into each place and I said, wow. In the way he has a teacher who anytime she expresses wonder, she says, my eyes went boing. And he said, that's, that's what I, I was feeling. I, I, it was just amazing. And it, he was it, the symbolism of, each um, of each house of worship being roughly the same size and connected through a forum that they call a forum, which is a place for education, dialogue, exchange, events. Uh, the power of that uh, the architecture is not lost on him. It's named for Moses, for the Rambam, Maimonides, Moses bin Maimon, who is a revered figure, not just in the Jewish tradition, but uh, but among, he was a, a great figure in the uh, kind of uh, great intellectual moments uh, of the Islamic empires as well. And, and well known, his writings are well known, both his Arabic writings, his philosophy, his medicine, uh, to, to in the great Arabic literary, literary tradition. And uh, this, um, I'm excited, is that um, the opening for the synagogue, the Chanukah Tabayit, is going to be this Sunday. We are going to put up mezuzot. We are going to welcome in uh, uh, Sifrei Torah, Torah scrolls. Uh, we are going to have the first official minyan, the first prayer service that will take place in this room, in this uh, in the sanctuary. Um, and we'll have children's programs, food and music. And so uh, certainly if anybody is local, you have to come. You must, must come on, uh, on Sunday from, from 12 to 2. We feel, and I, I felt this uh, uh, last night, that this will be a great convergence point of the world. This will be a, the kind of place where... Uh, great religious leaders will come, great cultural leaders will come to be inspired. Uh, it's the best place, Muslims, Christians, and Jews. Uh, Eli mentioned the term beacon of light. It is a beacon of light in actuality. When you are driving by, you can see at night, especially you can see a lit up menorah, a lit up cross, and a lit up crescent. Um, and each of the houses is filled with light. And so the way that it affects the landscape, uh, that beautifies the landscape of uh, Saudi Island Abu Dhabi is truly magnificent. 
So I'm, I'm in this moment really filled with hope. Uh, this parsha that we're coming up, this Shabbat is known as Shabbat Shkalim. It's the time when each of us is called to give a half shekel, not a complete shekel, not a complete coin, but a half a coin, uh, half a worth of coin uh, to building the to the building of the temple. And in this case, it's not a, uh, and of course what that symbolizes is that not any one of us has the power to build on our own. It's only everyone together with everyone's contribution. Uh, in this case, there's no financial contribution necessary whatsoever, but there is a need for people to uh, contribute ideas and spirit and song and prayer uh, in order to really make this Mishkan, this, uh, th this place of prayer, one which meets its fullest potential. Shabbat Shalom. Oh, okay. Should I give you a, a quick tour? Yeah, I'm getting some nods here. Let me show you. Let me just show you. Here. So um, it's about 30 meters high. So I'm just going to give you the elevation. The inspiration comes from the sukkah. And so you'll see there's a skylight right in the top. And then coming down uh, from the skylight, I don't know if it's visible on the camera, but there's a, uh, a chain mail mesh. And there is also a... Um, um, and uh, there's seating for about 200 people. Aron and Ertamid and the ten mass seating possible, but it's currently set up in um, in Sephardic style with the bima in the middle and the seating that goes all the way around. We even have some Jewish people right here, um, and uh, we have two uh, uh, minorots. Uh, and the Aron is not yet populated, of course, because uh, we're still waiting for the uh, for the Sifrei Torah. And um, and there are doors in the front and the back, and it's um, it, it's quite extraordinary to just to be in the space. And so our hopes are very high, and our prayers are very deep. And we open. Uh, with everybody's chatsi shekel, with everybody's half shekel, that we fulfill um, all the possibilities. Thank you, Rabbi Sarna. And you have to really come here and have a look at it. It was absolutely amazing. And now over to James for the Dvar Torah. Thank you, Ada. Uh, Shabbat Shalom to everyone. Um, thank you, Rabbi Sarna, for showing us the incredible synagogue. Um, it's it's absolutely incredible to see. And actually what I wanted to say today, um, just a short Dwar Torah, actually correlates, I think, very nicely with this kind of beautiful symbol of friendship and peace. Um, so the Pasuk in this week's parasha uh, says, V'ger lo sone, v'lo silchatsenu, k'gerim hayusem be'eretz mitzrayim. You shall not oppress or wrong a stranger, for you are strangers in the land of Egypt. And so Rashi says that lo sone means with words, and Velosa Chatsenu means do not steal. And Rashi explains that the reason why we mustn't tease a stranger, we mustn't oppress a stranger, is because the stranger can tease you back by saying that you two were once strangers. And he brings down uh, a mechilta that says, Mum shalcha al Don't uh, taunt your friend with something that you yourself possess, um, or the blemish that you possess, or, or as we might say, those who live in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. Right? Don't, don't, uh, don't say something that uh, reflects on you as well. And Rashi interestingly mentions over here that a ger, in this case, doesn't only just mean a, a convert to Judaism in, in the sort of traditional sense that we use the word ger, but actually means a stranger or any newcomer to any place or any community. And so Rabbi Franz asks a really interesting question. And we, we find this kind of idea of, of, uh, of this prohibition of mistreating strangers actually very often in the Torah, probably more than any other commandment, we find that at least 36 times the Gemara says. And so Rabbi Friend says, why is it ki ger hayusem be'eretz Mitzrayim? Why is it because we were strangers in the land of Egypt? Surely, you know, what if we weren't strangers in the land of Egypt? Would we then be permitted to, you know, oppress strangers? Of course not. So surely it should just be because the Torah commands us to treat people with respect. That should really be the reason. Why is it, why is it, why is it connected to this Kiger Hayusim Be'eretz Mitzrayim? Why is it connected to this idea that we were once strangers and so therefore we must treat other strangers with respect and compassion? 
And so Rabbi Fran has an interesting interpretation where he says um, that it actually what we're talking about here is that despite the fact that we were strangers, meaning sometimes someone can feel that because they've gone through a certain struggle, that they feel that perhaps other people should also struggle. You know, a lot of times um, uh, people will say, you know, something is character building or adversity builds character or, or you know, there's an idea of tough love where parents, for example, will kind of say to their kids and uh, point out, you know, that when I was young, I did such and such. And so you should do the same thing. Um, and so we see this kind of very often, this idea where people feel that because they suffered through something, because they struggled through something, then some for some reason, that means other people should do the same. And so Rabbi Fran says that what the Torah is telling us over here, Kiger Yisim, is just because you were once strangers in the foreign land doesn't mean that's how you should treat people. It means that despite of that, um, do not treat or oppress a stranger. You know, a lot of times parents will tell their kids, uh, you know, we had it hard, you have it easy. And, I, and, and to some extent, parents can misunderstand the, the problems that their kids have. Um, I think in general, people can sometimes misunderstand what other people are going through. And I think it's really important, you know, that we understand that every person, every generation has their own tests. And what we shouldn't do is we shouldn't try and impose our tests on other people. And what we have to do is reach out and, and try and treat people with, with respect and not judge them for whatever it is that they're suffering through. I think it's worth noting that we can learn a lot from our friends in the Gulf, um, our cousins who have welcomed us so warmly into their homes, their communities. You know, certainly from my own experiences in, in Dubai, um, I, I really feel that it's been such an incredible thing which we can learn. And I think so we should be sure to treat each person with respect and kindness especially strangers, people that are new to our communities. And with that, maybe we, may we merit to rebuild the Beit HaMikdash in Harabi Amina. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you, everybody. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you, James. And now we'll go for pressure reading with Alex. Hmm? James, thank you. וגאל לא תונה ולא תילחצנו, כי גרים הייתם בארץ מצרים, כל אלמנה ויתום לא תענון, אם ענה תענה אותו, כי אם צעוק יצעק אליו, וחפי ורקתי אתכם, וחרב באו נשיכם מות ובניכם יתומים. אם כסף תווה את עמי, את הנימך לא תיאוק נושך, לא תשימון עליו נשך, אם חבול תבול סל מדריך עד בוא השמש, תשיבנו לו, כי היא כסותו לבדו, היא שמלתו לאורו במה ישכב, היה כי יצעק אליי ושמעתי, כי חנון אני. I would make a mishaberach for Rabbi Abadi, who is our rabbi and who is giving us a weekly Dvach Torah here. We all wish that he should be healthy and come back very soon. בעבור שאנחנו ניתן מתנה, ועבורה בזכר זה הקדוש ברוך הוא יהיה מלא רחמים, עליו להחלימו ולרפאותו ולהחזיקו ולהחיותו, וישלח לו מרה רפואה שלמה מן השמיים לרמח איבריו ושסה גידיו בתוך שאר חולי ישראל, רפואת הנפש ורפואת הגובה שלה בגלה ובזמן קריב ונאמר אמן. And we would like also to wish a speedy recovery to uh, uh, Jerry, who is uh, joining us also on a weekly basis. So hope to see you very soon too. Please, now for the translation, we go to Alex. To Alex. Hi. So you shall not wrong or oppress a stranger, for you are strangers in the land of Egypt. You shall not ill treat any widow or orphan. If you do mistreat them, I will heed their outcry as soon as they cry out to me. And my anger shall blaze forth and I will put you to the sword and your wives shall become widows and your children orphans. If you lend money to my people, to the poor among you, do not act toward them as a creditor, exact no interest from them. If you take your neighbor's garment in pledge, you must return it before the sun sets. 
It is the only available clothing. It is what covers the skin. In what else shall your neighbor sleep? Therefore, if that person cries out to me, I will pay heed for I am compassionate. Thank you, Alex. And now over to uh, Yehuda Friedman for the prayer for the GCC. May he who gives salvation to kings and dominion to princes, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, who delivers his servant David from the evil sword, who makes a way in the sea and a path through the mighty waters. Bless and protect, guard and help, exalt, magnify and uplift. His majesty, the king of Saudi Arabia. His majesty, the king of Bahrain. His majesty, the sultan of Oman. His highness, the president of the UAE. His highness, the mir of Kuwait. His highness, the mir of Qatar. And all their crown princes. And may the supreme king of kings, in his mercy, put a spirit of wisdom and understanding into their hearts and the hearts of, of all their counselors and officials to, to deal kindly with us, the house of Jacob and all the people of this land. Be their shelter and stronghold and let them not falter. In their days and in hours, may these lands be blessed with stability, prosperity, and peace. May this be his will and let us say, Amen. Um. And now for the final part of the uh, of this Zoom to Avi for Shalom Aleichem. Shalom Aleichem, Malachi Asharet, Malachi Elion, Mi Melech Malachi Amlachi, Makadosh Baruchu. Boachem le Shalom, Malachi Asharom, Malachi Elion. Mi melech malchei amlachim akadosh baruchu Baruchuni l'shalom, malachei ashalom, malachei elyon Mi melech malchei amlachim akadosh baruchu Seidchem l'shalom, malachei ashalom, malachei elyon Mi melech malchei amlachim akadosh baruchu. Thank you, Avi. Shabbat shalom from Abu Dhabi. And see you all next week. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Shalom. Bye. Shabbat shalom. 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 Shabbat shalom.